all right guys welcome to another video this is gary here so just want to say first and foremost thank you guys to all my new subscribers thank you thank you thank you thank you for liking my videos thank you for giving me comments thank you for giving me useful information to help me improve my videos it definitely means a lot and i want to do my best to make sure that i'm giving you guys good content so first and foremost it is very hot out here so i'm not going to be out here and unfortunately i don't have my mic so i can't do what i really wanted to do originally but it is about almost 100 degrees out here it's one of those hot summer days and being that it's in the summer that means there's a lot of road trips happening i just went on to lake tahoe in uh northern california had a great time uh the lake was freezing cold which is really ironic because it was like 100 degrees but anyways this is a time of the year where you have a lot of road trips so i've gotten comments on you know i've had road trip videos you guys can literally see what i have done and if you haven't seen some of my previous road trip videos, I definitely encourage you to go look at those, check those out, uh, especially if you're new to EVs, not just Teslas. Of course, I have a Tesla, two Teslas at this point in time. But if you're just, you know, new to EVs in general, maybe a good idea just to take, check out some road trip videos if you feel a little nerve or you have some nerves kicking in. So you find me here with my 2018 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, looking good. Got about 102,000 miles on it still looking fresh you wouldn't tell if you just look at it um coming down the street you wouldn't know it has that many miles most people don't i went to get my tires rotated and everybody was like wow it's got a hundred thousand miles yes it does i've you know this car has been wonderful to me um haven't had really any issues with it in the four or five years I've, i well six years i think six years i've had it so i got it in 2018 but uh yeah it's been a great car but you know being that it is old, it has 100,000 miles on it. You know, you have some battery depreciation on there. So, you know, good thing the, the trip planner is pretty good, but there's some tips that I have that I wanna share with you guys because there's a lot of new Tesla owners out there. My mom is one of them. Um, I, I, I'm just coming in contact with a lot of new people that are new to EVs and they're just so nervous about what to do, how to travel. Of course, with Tesla, it's pretty easy. You just gotta put in the trip planner. But sometimes if you're fresh and you're new, you may get really terrified sometimes. I'm not even gonna lie, you have that range anxiety, that's what they call it. But you know, you have that moment where you have about 5% to get to a charger and then it drops down to 4% and it drops down to 3% and you're like, oh my God, I'm not gonna make it to the charger. What happens if I lose this and I don't make it? Do I, I gotta get towed to the charger, what's gonna happen? Really, it's similar to gas, you run out of gas and you don't have a gas canister on you. You gotta find out where you're gonna get the gas and bring it back or have a car tow you to a nearby gas station. So it's, it's kind of similar, but it can be a little bit of nerve wracking with the EV because EV chargers are sometimes, depending on where you are located, far and few between, um, so in between. So, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a few tips that I have from my six years of ownership with a Tesla and now, you know, with a two month, ownership of a tesla model y and what i have learned during my road trips like i said i've traveled all over i'm originally from missouri st louis missouri if you guys didn't know that um that's a tidbit for you but i drove my car bought it in st louis so most people don't know that but i bought the, bought my vehicle in st louis drove it all the way to california stopped at the grand canyon went up to san francisco i've driven it to seattle i've driven this car everywhere you know to vegas all around you know the pch stuff like i i've just driven this car and i've seen so much expansion of charging networks it's crazy like when i got mine you didn't have all these options out here to charge so it's great that they're ex continuously expanding this but yeah let's keep this short tips tips number one to prolong or make sure that you're in a good chance to make it to that charger tip number one slow down I know a lot of people don't want to do that when they're on that road trip, they're driving, you know, the speed limit is 75, you're probably going 85, you're going 80, whatever, whatever it may be, you want to get there as quickly as possible. I do the same thing. But if you're, you're, you're looking at your car routing system or navigation, and it's saying that you're going to arrive with 5%, and then you keep driving 85, and then it's at 3%, and then it drops down to 2%, okay, you're going to have to make a change gotta make a change my recommendation probably the easiest thing you can do at that point in time is just slow down you probably should go the speed limit just drive the speed limit typically the car is not really taken into account that you're driving over the speed limit so slow down that's probably the easiest way that you can save some percentage slow down maybe five ten miles per hour 
and most of the time you'll start to see that see that percentage starts to creep up that's kind of like the worst case scenario for me i definitely try to get to the charges as soon as possible because i don't mind arriving with a low state of charge but if you're kind of new to this and you're like you really want that cushion make sure that you just slow down if you're getting to that point where you're you're, un, you're very uncertain if you're going to make it just slow down that's the easiest thing i can tell you all right tip number two charge with a cushion what do i mean by that so if you haven't watched my other videos the car tells you when to stop charging and when you can continue your trip to arrive at the next charger well i don't listen to that all the time because i know i drive a little faster than the speed limit on most roads so what i do is i will stay at the charger for another five minutes get me a little bit more percentage on the bank and the battery and you know if i go up five percent ten percent whatever usually it's about five percent ten percent i typically try to leave the charger with um you know at least probably five to ten percent more than what the actual computer estimation was so if you're uncertain that you you know you're kind of like eh, i don't know i don't trust it a little bit charge with a little cushion keep it plugged in you're not forced to get off so you know stay for a few more minutes get a, get a few more percentage and then i give you a little cushion you could drive a little faster do what you need to do so that's tip number right, two tip number three it is hot outside right now so of course everybody is rocking that ac burning up out here specifically in california i mean when i was driving to lake tahoe i saw i saw temperatures of 115 degrees it's hotter in vegas and other places but arizona it is hot so of course people on these road trips are running their ac to the max I typically keep my AC at about 72, between 70, 72 temperature in the car. Um, if you're like, you know, with the hot temperatures, your battery is continuously trying to cool itself off. So you're going to start losing a little bit of percentage. And this happens with gas vehicles as well. You know, your AC compressor and things are just running really hard in the in this hot temperature. So it's trying to keep your cabin as cool as possible. And because of that, you're going to use a little bit more battery to do that. So another tip I would give you is that if you're, you know, seeing that percentage dropping, you're slowed down already, you do it, did all did some other stuff already, try to adjust the temperature, raise it up a little bit. So let's say you, you average about 70, um, 70 degrees in the car, raise it up to about 72, 73. You still get a cool car, probably not as cool as you would like it, but you will save, uh, probably save a little bit of percentage. That's probably the, I don't do that that much unless I'm really like stressed out and that doesn't happen that often. Like I said, the, the speed is probably the big thing, but if you turn down your temperature a little bit, turn it from high speed to medium speed, do what you need to do that with that route. Typically, you can save a little bit of battery percentage that way. So that's another example. So let's go to the next one. Tip number four, if you you know you're going to that charger, you don't think you're going to make it. Get behind a big semi truck and just coast right behind that thing. Try to cut that air resistance on your vehicle. That, that that's, that's another thing. That's going to save you a little bit of percentage. You're going to slow down because they're most likely driving slower than you are. And you're going to cut some of the air, air resistance in your vehicle. And because of that, you're going to save some speed. I mean, save some battery. So, sorry, bug guy in the car. Um, but yeah, that's tip number four. Pretty simple. I mean, self-explanatory. I don't want to go too much in depth on that, but... If you like minimize your air resistance, you know, your car is not trying to push through as much and you know, you're gonna save a little bit of battery that way too. These things are, you know, that one I, I rarely do, but I just wanna give you some of the tips I've noticed over the years that have worked for me. Let's go to tip number five. Tip number five, last resort, see if there's some nearby chargers that's earlier than the one that you're routing to. Now, when you put your navigation or your destination into Tesla's navigation, I'm specifically talking about Tesla because that's what I'm used to. I'm used to. It's going to route you to a charger you expect you to meet or that it believes you can make it to. That's not to say that there's not chargers that are closer. And sometimes if the Tesla does not think you're going to make it, it will just automatically reroute. Sometimes it doesn't. And that's because it really is pushing. It thinks it can make it with a very small percentage. This may be too, too small of a percentage for new people. You know, you may want to get there before it hits 1%. You may not even want to deal with that. So if the system is not rerouting, go into the map see what superchargers are nearby i hope you you, you know how to do that um this ain't really that video but if you really want me to show you that that's in some of my other videos or if you know i could do a quick short on that if you, you comment below if you want to see that but go into the system hit the charger the electrical icon see if there's any chargers in the route same route but a little a little sooner than the the route that's you know the car wants you to take try that and stop a little earlier charge up and then once you charge up it's going to route you to another charger it should do that automatically in the navigation 
but sometimes it doesn't. And with the new people that's joining the EV family these days, they're kind of still nervous. They gotta, you know, I have years under my belt. Once you go with that first few road trips, eh, probably a year, you would be fine. Uh, specifically, how it depends on how long you're going on or how many road trips you're taking, but you'll be fine after a year. So you should be pretty normal. Um, or traveling, you, you know, doing all that stuff should be pretty normal. So uh, that is my tips, tip number five. And those are my five tips to kind of help minimize that uncertainty of making it to a charger station. The biggest thing I would say, slow down if you're driving too fast. If you're driving too fast, check on that AC. Lastly, get behind a big semi truck, try to get that air resistance minimized. And then push come to shove, try to find a charger that's a little closer than the one that you're going to. Those are my tidbits for you. And also, you know, hopefully your route to somewhere like a hotel or something that has a charger. So then you don't have to worry about waking up in the morning, finding a charger and all that stuff. If you can, try to find hotels that actually have chargers on site that'll make your life a lot easier. That's all I have for you today. If you want to see more, let me know. Comment if you have some, you know, tidbits that you've discovered in your travels. I would like to know those as well. So thank you guys again. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Talk to you guys later. Peace.